there guys good evening it is the earth master here on the live stream uh, with an update video on this uh, pretty windy night out here in northern california it is january 3rd 2022 monday evening about 6 12 p.m california time latest quake on the globe according to the usgs a 4.3 earthquake into the southeast region of hawaii the big island Located on the EMSC map, they are showing a little bit larger on the magnitude compared to the USGS. They have that earthquake listed as a 4.5 there on the Big Island one hour and 42 minutes ago. Looks like a depth of about 42 kilometers. We have been seeing some movement out there on the Big Island. Uh, looks like some activity kicking up around Crete, Greece as well. 3.5 kicking up 23 minutes ago. Uh, of course, some movement kicking up in Taiwan as well on that map let's go ahead and check out the latest here on the usgs map while we're checking the world earthquake activity 2.5 and above for the states we'll go ahead and drop this down to the all magnitudes show you guys a little bit of activity kicking up on the big island here southeast flank region seeing a pretty large cluster of quakes kicking up here not a whole lot of uh of uh interference i guess if you will when it comes to the uh volcanoes around normally a large earthquake around a volcano could uh, stir things up a little bit but uh, according to the hvo there was no uh no effects on the volcano activity uh this is like in an area where there's an earthquake swarm that's been occurring for quite a while it looks like since about august 2019 this swarm of movement has been kicking up almost daily uh, we always see this activity kicking up here around the 30 to 35 kilometer depth range. Uh, looks like uh, this earthquake is part of the ongoing seismic swarm underneath the uh, Pahala area, which started in August 2019. Uh, webcams and other data streams show no impact on the ongoing eruption at Kilauea. So that is good, right? But uh, a little bit larger than we're used to. Normally we see some... Uh, Oh, well, some mid threes, maybe some upper threes, but a 3.5 or a 4.3, 4.5, a magnitude quake. They're a little bit on the larger side uh, compared to what we're used to. The rest of the big island, uh, Mauna Kea, Mauna Loa, uh, Kilauea, of course, ongoing activity there at Kilauea. All seismic activity uh, other than the movement on the southeast flank region, uh, pretty uh, typical. Looking at the western part of the Pacific Ring of Fire, does show some movement, a 5.8 out in the Japan's re uh, Japan region. Right in, right in the, uh, looks like around the Philippine Plate area. Japan Trench up north. And uh, got a separate name, Trench, here. Between the Japan Trench and the uh, Mariana Trench here. Got this uh, specific name. Uh, Izu something other. I'm not going to attempt to uh, pronounce that one. But we did see a 5.8 there earlier. And also a little bit more aftershock activity following the 6.2 in the Taiwan region. With a 5.0 kicking up. Uh, in that area so a little bit of movement height and activity here in this region but uh, all areas to the west look at this pretty quiet not a whole lot of movement whatsoever as we work our way towards the atlantic uh, i believe this earthquake here was a little bit older earlier this morning a 4.7 in the northern mid-atlantic ridge uh, big picture right now some activity ramping up along the west coast uh, and also a little bit of activity in the aleutian trench area where we're seeing the uh, 4.4 and a, uh, what do we got, 3.5, somewhat deep here into the Aleutian Trench region. This area right here, all up and down here, actually the highest spot for accumulation of uh, subduction uh, is within this region here. Uh, can get some high accumulated stress very quickly. Uh, let's see, into the Alaska region, up around the Denali area, some microquakes kicking up here. And also up around or down around the Anchorage area, seeing a little bit of activity kick up. Uh, let's see, into the states, we did see some movement into the Northern California region, just around the, uh, looks like close to the Mendocino Triple Point Junction. That's the area around the Pacific Plate, uh, the North American Plate, and the uh, Gorda Plate in this uh, map here. A couple twos. I know there was a couple more kicking up here. We watched them on the live seismographs, but a 3.0 also included 18.3 kilometers. Man, I'm hoping the wind doesn't bring the power down tonight. It's pretty windy out there. Got uh, gusts up to about 50 miles per hour here in Northern California. Uh, we're seeing some further movement up here in the Seattle fault system. We have seen uh, some activity stretch across there over the last week or so, and also 
the last 30 days, uh, some movement scattered out and about here. Uh, the Seattle Fault is pretty uh, dangerous when it comes to producing a uh, significant size earthquakes. Roughly, um, well, uh, 7.0 or greater is possible within this region. And in fact, this area, uh, this specific fault system here, the Seattle Fault, which runs through Seattle, uh, could be a little bit more dangerous than, for example, the Cascadia Subduction Zone, which sits off the coast of Washington and Oregon, California area. Uh, this fault is specifically dangerous because of the type of fault that it is, which is a thrust fault, and also <clears throat> just very close to the highly populated regions of uh, Seattle and Tacoma area. Uh, there is possible of uh, uh, some movement uh, when it comes to... Uh, Let's see what we've got here. 900 to 930 CE earthquake was over a thousand years ago. Um, so there are some definite uh, traces of past historical large earthquakes. Magnitude 7 or greater on the uh, to Seattle Fault. Just looking at this here. 1100 years ago. <clears throat> So yeah, it's been uh, been quite a while, folks, since we've had a, a major quake there on that uh, Seattle Fault. There's a, definitely a wealth of information on it. There's some other fault systems up there that are pretty dangerous as well. Uh, not only the Seattle Fault, but a lot more than people think uh, up around the Washington area. Of course, the sleeping giant of all is the Cascadia. And uh, at least right now, things look to be calm there on that uh, Cascadia subduction zone. Let's go ahead and check out the tremor map while we're speaking of that. And once again, zero epicenters of tremor along the uh, Cascadia. Um, so yeah, nothing, uh, nothing really going on there in the uh, tremor department. By the way, the depth of these earthquakes pretty deep, 1.5 on the Seattle Fault at 27.7 kilometers. Some activity kicking up in Idaho as well. Uh, right around the Sawtooth Fault System and areas to the northeast of there. Around the, uh, looks like Pioneer Mountains area. Seen a little swarm of movement kicking up in the Microquake area or Microquake Department. And uh, Yellowstone looks pretty quiet. Down into the Utah area, we're seeing a pretty good sized swarm. South of Cedar City, just today about 11 earthquakes. Uh, largest so far, a 2.6. And the depth here of these earthquakes, pretty shallow ranging from roughly surface down to about three to five kilometers down below the surface there. Looking at the last 30 days of activity here, uh, shows some increase in activity. Most of it was today. Uh, there was an other area over here around Cedar, Utah, uh, that we watched over the past couple months show up here uh, in, a, in a separate swarming as well. Seen about 43 earthquakes within the last 30 days of Cedar, Utah. Um, and these pretty shallow as well really shallow uh, the depths here indicative uh, within the mountain ranges right so these would be pretty much uh, um, right around the surface area uh, for the depth of these earthquakes and once again mostly microquakes in this area as well a couple mid level twos in there over last day uh, all magnitudes here only a couple within the cedar sunnyside utah area uh, down through the Texas area, Pecos, Texas, seeing some movement as well. A couple threes and whatnot kicking off down there. And also Oklahoma area getting in on uh, some further movement. <clears throat> this earthquake here was from uh, earlier around the Diamond City, Arkansas area. 2.2. New Madrid zone looks pretty quiet tonight. South Carolina did have this 2.5 early, earlier this morning as well. So uh, not a whole lot of renewed movement here on the eastern part of the country. Uh, let's see, what do we got there on Hawaii? We got another one that just kicked up here. This one just came in, a 2.1 it looks like. Uh, as we're uh, chatting here, this was not here on the map. That's right smack dab on the Mauna Loa area. 2.1, uh, pretty shallow earthquake there, one kilometer. So I might have to keep an eye on this region here of Hawaii. Uh, even though we didn't see any subsequent uh, adjustment or uh, disturbances in the volcano following that 4.5 down here earlier, 4.3 USGS, 4.5 on the EMSC, uh, it may not just kick up right away. It could take a couple hours, it could take a couple days 
um, for maybe some notification on um, something brewing here at the other volcanoes. We will keep an eye on it pretty closely. I do run a live seismograph station down here on the southeast flank that uh, picks up activity. So look for that on the live stream, uh, live, live stream seismographs. Uh, looking at the Yellowstone map does not show any uh, renewed movement. None whatsoever at all. Uh, looks pretty darn quiet. Some ice quaking looks like there around the promontory. Other than that, no microquakes or any significant movement to report at Yellowstone National Park. Uh, the activity on the sun, of course, very dwindling. It's not even uh, worth chatting about. But uh, looks like maybe potential for some higher latitude storming. 40% uh, chance here, uh, at least tonight, and then dwindling down over the next couple nights to about 20%. Mid latitudes, probably out of luck. Uh, but there's some uh, aurora probabilities here showing up on the 30 minute uh, forecast. You can see uh, just a slight percentage of uh, auroras and geomagnetic storming at the higher latitudes. Everything else looks pretty calm on the sun when it comes to the solar sunspots. Maybe a little bitty one coming up around the bend. Other than that, it's pretty uh, pretty quiet. Check out Earthquakes Canada while we're on it. And it uh, looks like still the last earthquake way up here around the uh, which bay? Lancaster Sound area, that's right. Um, other than that, no renewed movement on the northern end of the Cascadia. Things kind of just quieting down temporarily. Uh, uh, let's see what else we got here. I want to go over to the EMSC once again and check out uh, some activity that may not have been reported here on the uh, USGS uh, network. Uh, everything actually looks pretty much uh, in check, it looks like. Hawaii, of course, here's that 5.8 uh, Taiwan quakes. Yeah, so a little bit of movement. These guys, uh, of course, not showing the activity there in the uh, Northern California area. This is only 4.0 and above uh, when it comes to uh, worldwide activity. 3.5 in the Crete, Greece region 34 minutes ago. So uh, kind of keeping an eye on things here pretty closely, folks. Check out the live seismographs. Uh, I did. Looks like... Um, well, I did add a DINS... Uh, Dinsmore Station. That's the uh, replacement channel, replacement station, I should say, for the uh, Petrolia area because for some reason the Petrolia Station data is missing. It's not coming in to the live seismographs. And that's the one I normally watch for uh, earthquake activity in Northern California and the southern end of the Cascadia. So we're going to knock that off the charts for now. And uh, if you guys want to monitor the activity there in the uh, Northern California region, it's going to be the station called uh, Dinsmore, Dinsmore, California, just uh, right around the Eureka area. And of course, station down here in Hawaii, uh, picking up activity as well. So uh, we'll watch these stations for the uh, remainder of the night and provide any updates if they uh, warrant the activity or warrant the update for now. Take care, folks. Stay safe out there. And once again, if the stream does go down, which it, it's possible, there's some strong winds out there kicking up here in my area, I will bring it back up. Uh, of course, as soon as the power comes back on and uh, go from there. So, all right, guys, have a good day. Uh, make sure while you're here, subscribe, folks. We are pretty close to 70,000 subscribers. And FYI, at 75K, we are doing another giveaway for six people. Uh, last time we had it, uh, 50,000, our next step up 75,000 for six people and a uh, hundred K we're giving away 10 prizes. Now they're all different prizes. Uh, like last, um, uh, our last giveaway there for the three uh, contestants or the three, uh, winners, uh, was some, uh, some pretty cool geology rocks, uh, a couple pins, from the uh, Mount Lassen area, I believe, and some and some stuff from uh, Yellowstone, some uh, collectible items. So uh, this time around, we got some more surprises, a little bit different uh, prize bag, but it should be cool for those six people. We'll be uh, we'll be uh, definitely announcing it more as we get uh, up around seventy thousand subscribers, and then of course seventy five k will be when we do the drawing and uh, whatnot, but we'll, like I said, we'll get more into it as we get closer. So make sure you subscribe while you're here. 
Still got a high percentage of people watching the videos, but they're not subscribed. So that's okay. If you guys want to watch, that's completely awesome. But make sure you guys subscribe while you're here and click that notification bell to get notified on uh, current events when it comes to earthquake activity, solar weather, and uh, whatnot. Something outside really uh, hitting against the house. All right, guys, I got to go. Have a good night. We will chat you guys a little bit later. Peace out.